So the final chapter in the, this talk on hemostasis is about fibrinolysis. Now this is the, the, the component of the, of the hemostasis equilibrium um, that's involved in the actual breakdown of the clot, so the breakdown of the fibrin clot once it's formed. And as I've said before, it's just as important as, as being able to produce a clot, being able to have anticoagulant effects and ultimately a clot breakdown um, to achieve a balance between you know, excessive, um, excessive clotting, overcoagulation, and undercoagulation, and and the subsequent bleeding. And this is achieved again by a, a proenzyme enzyme uh, pairing. In this case here, it's it's, it's a pair called uh, plasminogen and plasmin. Now plasminogen is a, a plasma protein, much like the other clotting factors we've talked about so far, and it's it's trapped within the the fibrin clot as it as it as it grows as it responds to uh, to to a, an injury, and it doesn't have a role as itself. But as with activating clotting factors, as we've talked about, it's converted um, to its active form plasmin. Now. Plasmin, it's it's a it's an important proteolytic enzyme. It's similar to the enzyme uh, tryptin uh, involved in the, the digestive system, and it, it has it's going to have an, a powerful effect on on breaking down a few products, um, but the most important one that it breaks down is actually a fibrin. So remember, the fibrin chains are what's holding our our fibrin clot together, uh, and it's broken down into or basically fibrin degradation products. And it's this this plasmin which is acting as the as the as the enzyme here. It's acting on this fibrin uh, and breaking it down enzymatically. It's uh, it's not just fibrin that's affected by this. There's uh, as I said, a number of the clotting factors are as well. Um, some examples are you've got fibrinogen. Um, you have clotting factors five, um, clotting factors uh, factor eight, and prothrombin as well. So, you know, it, it's breaking down the clot. It's having an anti anticoagulant effect as well. Now, like um, like the other, well, basically all the other processes we've talked about here, um, there's there's a chain of events that 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 lead onto onto this process here, and fibrinolysis process is, is no different, um, and there's different activators of plasminogen um, through the body. The most important one, which we're going to talk about, is something called um, tissue plasminogen plasminogen activator. So. And as with, I suppose, with many of the namings in 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 these uh, processes, it does what it says in the tin. It activates tissue plasminogen, um, and it it causes it to 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 go go from the change of being of being a simple plasma protein to an active proteolytic enzyme. Um, there's other forms as well. There's other ones that are worth that be worth mentioning, not as important, um, but ones such as streptokinase, might be able to tell from the name. Actually, produced from from the um, um, streptococci, um, hemolytic streptococci, hence their name. Um, there's also uh, an important one called, called urokinase. And you might be able to to get some evidence from the name, but it's actually it's it's, it's actually isolated in, in human urine. Um, you know the human urinary tract place where you don't want clots to form. You don't you don't want obstruction of um, of the urinary tract, uh, and it p plays a role there. So, how do we get from um, how, how does tissue where does tissue plasminogen activator fit in? Well, as we already talked about, drawing our all the way up here, it's the trigger for for tissue pl for for plasminogen. It activates it, unsurprisingly. Um, but where does it come from? Well, tissue plasminogen activator. It's it's released from the from the endothelial um, 
the endothelial cells of, of the vessel wall and it, it, it's released steadily it's reached a, a steady pay, uh, a steady rate um, and so it's it if firstly it limits the it limits the spread of of the clot from beyond the point where it's needed again we're getting the idea that um, when there is an injury to the vessel wall when there's when there's trauma the um, the, the balance is swung. There's an overwhelming of, of procoagulants, and it moves it moves this equilibrium towards you know the procoagulant end and forms a clot. If you're going away from there, the, these anticoagulant factors are are in, are in you know are, are in the majority, and it prevents it prevents any clot formation. And the same same idea with tissue tissue plasminogen activator. Um, it's it's released in a steady amount away from the site of injury. And if there's insignificant procoagulants, then it actually results in um, results in clot lysis. So you can readily understand that if there's if there's not you know a significant amount of um, of tissue damage that would cause procoagulants, then um, enough to you know enough to maintain a, a fibrin clot, then this it, it, just by its slow and, and persistent release is enough to cause um, fibrinolysis and breakdown of the clot. Similarly, well, conversely, an important point is that tissue plasminogen activator itself um, is is more adherent to fibrin. So again, that the balance is there when you, when you have a lot of fibrin, when you when you've got you know a large clot, when you've got a lot of clot for, um, formation, it's less likely to 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 reach the fi the plasminogen and activate it, uh, and less likely to to result in plasmin. So again, it's it's trying to form the balance between where a clot's needed and where a clot's not needed and allow the equilibrium to be in the right place and it's just a, a part of that that uh, of that process there's other things to mention as well um, you know all these activators have their inhibitors so you, you have um, you also have something called um, tissue pla uh, tissue tissue plasminogen activator inhibitor I won't spell it all out um, but for instance this is this is what protein C acts on when it um, it has a has a it actually inhibits the inhibitor as I mentioned in the previous talk uh, and so increases the activity of tissue plasminogen activator and it's another thing to think about these they interact in a, in a very complex way to have activated inhibitors but ultimately it's all about the balance of, of procoagulants and anticoagulants and fibrinolytics as, as part of the anticoagulant side to to maintain clots where it's needed uh, and um, to, to keep to prevent clot formation where it's not needed.